In the previous videos, we learned how to model each of the parts of this assembly to get an understanding how you would convert something that's actually physical into a digital form and how the different profile choices will affect the number of actions you have to make in FreeCAD or any CAD package to create your model. Hopefully by now you've got an understanding of how you tackle something like this and the consequences from a different choice of profile and the challenges that you would face along the way. This video should be quite short and it just finishes off taking all those parts, putting it into the A2 Plus workbench, constraining them together with some simulation of the part working. So I hope you enjoy these videos and let's finish this project. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to span the channel. So we're gonna start the assembly in FreeCAD in the A2 Plus workbench. There are a number of assembly workbenches in FreeCAD and they're installed from the Tools and Add-on Manager. Within here, you'll find A2 Plus, Assembly 4, Explode Assembly, etc. There are a number of them there and they all do something different. Some of them can even work together, such as the Explode Assembly. We're gonna be using the A2 Plus. Now the A2 Plus requires the parts to be imported in from the separate files. We're gonna create a new document and also we need to save it. So we're gonna save straight away. So save as. It's best to keep your latch assembly and your parts in the same directory. In that way we keep everything together. So if we move the directory, everything moves with it. I'm just gonna call the file latch assembly. Now we save the file, we can import the parts. There are two ways of importing parts. One way is to add a part from an external file and the other one is to add a shape from a external file. They do do something different. So we click add a shape from a external file and go for part one and open that up. It will pull that part straight in. Let's just delete that and go for the add shape from external file. And we'll go for part one again. You'll notice that it will ask you to import the objects. So these are the visible objects within your imported file. Let's just click the ones we want to import and click import. And though we've imported this part, there is going to be something that we need to change with it. And if we come to over to the part body, we will see this fixed position. There has to be one or more fixed positions in assembly. The reason why it's fixed is because when we simulate this, this part will stay stationary. It's best to import the fixed position part first, not like what we've done here. I'm going to transform this by using right click transform and rotate this around this way. Let's move it over to the left and hit okay. Let's import our fixed part. I'm going to use the add shape from external file. Our fixed part is part three, the base of our object. You can see straight away we've got the sketch that's come up, that's visible, and we've got the body here. So I'm going to click on the body and import that one. We've imported the body. And if we look to the left, we can see part three. And I'm going to set the fixed position as true, which you can see there, it's saying true. This part is just floating about at the moment. It's still got a fixed position. Let's right click and transform this out of the way. So now let's import another part. I'm going to go for part two and open that up. Import the body and hit import. This has become mobile. I'm going to just drop it onto the screen. And we're going to start constraining this to this part here. For that, I need to find out the connection points. So I'm going to connect up 
between this hole and this hole. Normally we would have some kind of connector in here like a pin. I can go and model that, but we're just gonna progress through this assembly. To attach the parts, I need to pick the circle on the other side and the circle of where it's gonna connect. Look to our constraints on the toolbar, we've got add circular edge constraint. If I click that, the part will be moved into position. And we get this dialog box that comes up. Now, if we look at this, we may need to add some offset to this. So you can see that it's touching this part and we can set an offset from here. So I'm going to go minus about 0.5. Now that's in position, let's hit the set. And we can move on to the next part. So we're gonna import another part now. If we get an error when this moves, that's because it may be fixed. We look to the left, we can see that the tree is being filled with our parts. Let's open up part three and part two. And you can see the circular constraints that have been added. If I press the space bar to hide them, you'll see the corresponding constraint is hidden as well. Let's press the space bar again. Let's import our last part, add shape from external pile. This is part four and open. Select the body and import. It has become mobile, so we can place it wherever we want. At any time we can right click and transform now our part has been placed onto the screen. Let's take this circle and this circle, and again, use a circle on circle constraint. If we look, we can see what's happened. And we may need some offset. If we accept that, at any time we can come back in to the constraint and change where that's going to sit. Again, I'm gonna go minus 0.5 millimeters. Let's send it the other way and it's in position. We also got the option to flip direction or set the direction mode from here. Let's accept that. And now let's bring in our other part. So we need to constrain this part against here. At the moment, this is fixed. So we must check that that's fixed. Fixed position true. And these will be fixed position or false. If I click on the simulate button, we'll see this starts to move. So we've got the constraints working in here. Let's click off and drop those there. So we need to position this. Again, I'm gonna come in and use this circle and this time I'm going to constrain it to this bar here. So control slit both of those. So you can see that the constraint that we used previously has been grayed out. Next to it, we've got an access constraint. And these align the accesses of those two parts. If I click it, we can see the constraint inconsistent cannot solve. That's okay that and delete that constraint and hit yes. Look over to the left. You see we've got the axis constraint here. We need to delete that. We look to the part four, we can see the fixed position is false. And this one, the fixed position is true. This is the reason why it wouldn't constrain. So let's drop this down and set it to false. Now the fixed position of this part is false. I can select that circle again and this bar and use the axis constraint. It now moves into position and we'll accept that. Notice how it's been placed. If I select the move the selected part under constraint, we can see how that's gonna move. We can actually move it up and down that axis, which is what we want, but we also need to keep this in line with this part here. Now this is where multiple constraints come in handy. If we come to the base, 
we can see we have got edges, vertices, and planes that we can constrain to. If we look at the model, we can see we can keep lines in line with each other. So I'm going to take this line and this line and use the axis constraint. So I'm going to keep these two in line. So click on that and you can see the constraint has been accepted. So set that. Now if we look, we can see what's happened. Let's try simulating this. Move object under constraint and we can start to move this object back and forth. And now this keeps in line on this plane. If you have problems trying to get these constraints to work, just make sure you haven't got any leftover constraints on the left hand side here. Remember when we add a constraint and it fails, we may have to remove it from the left hand side in our tree view as well. So we've come to the end of our tutorial. We've learned how to use the A2 Plus Workbench. We've learned how to model each of those individual parts and learned about the different choices between profiles and how they affect our operations. We've also covered how to create more stable models and the reasons why you add operations such as chamfers, fillets, etc. as the last operation. This set of videos is really a standalone set of videos that complements the Learning Free Cab for Beginners series. And though it's part of that series, this can be used separately as one single piece of learning material. Please look out on my Ko-Fi site because I will be selling this set as one collection. This means it will be free of ads and you can consume it at your own leisure. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you again soon. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing and I'll see you again soon.